right, today we got a pretty special video because we have the Next Level Racing Gaming Chair and it is the Elite Leather Edition. So the box that it comes in is quite large and the shipping label says 98 pounds. So it is packed in another box to protect the retail box inside and it looks pretty nice. We can see the picture of what the chair looks like. Some features here. Also includes the headrest and lumbar support cushions. On the side of the box, we can see some more information. We got 4D adjustable arm, height, rotation, and width, two millimeter steel frame, high density molded foam, multifunctional tilt, suede lumbar support, and headrest cushions. Compatible with next level racing wheel stand ecosystem, constructed from high quality PU leather. And here you guys see we have a driving simulator, and this is the next level racing stand, which is the 2.0. And we got the Logitech G920. 23, which is a newer steering wheel with True Force connected to a PlayStation 5 there, playing the Gran Turismo game and listening through these G5000 speakers. So yeah, really nice setup. And the way this wheel stand 2.0 works is you just connect a chair to it. And so this next level racing chair should be perfect for this setup. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what we see on top. So we got soft foam all around. And you guys can see it's all packed very well. So here it looks like we have the instruction manual, the hardware that we need to put it together. Looks like a box with something in it. Let's go ahead and see. So we got our casters in there and also our shock. So I guess for the next part, let's go ahead and lift out the backrest. And it's bagged in this plastic, very nice attention to detail. And we got little next level racing logos everywhere. So we got more things in the box here, our cushion. Looks like covers to some sides. The base, which is by the way, some kind of cast aluminum or something. Very nice, very well packed. The headrest cushion, the armrest, the bottom cushion, which is quite large and got a good weight to it. Also individually wrapped. And yeah, you guys can see my hand and how big this or wide the chair is. More stuff, looks like telescoping pieces for the shock. The other armrest and the last part here, is our mechanism for the chair. So this is where the adjuster and the spring is and basically that makes the whole thing function. All right, so we got everything out and you guys can see quite a few things here. The box is very large. Everything was packed very well. So I'm gonna clean up a bit and we'll pack everything and start putting it together. All right guys, so we got all the pieces laid out and we'll look at the quality of the materials and all the build after we put it together. So let's go ahead and start with this instruction manual. All right, so here we have what is included in the box and then step one, which we're gonna put the arm rests onto the bottom side of the cushion. And we're gonna need eight M8 by 25 millimeter bolts. And if we look at our hardware, we can see that it's these right here. So looking underneath, they're gonna mount right here and on the armrest themselves, on the bottom, we can see this one's the left, which will go on this side, and the right on here. So let's raise this up and start our bolts. All right, so we got them all kind of started, and it is adjustable somewhat, so you can go a little closer or farther away, depending, you know, on your size and how far you want them out. So normally for me, I like them all the way in, as close as possible to me. Also need to grab this provided Allen wrench slash Phillips screwdriver and we'll go ahead and tighten this up. All right, so both of the sides are on. Let's go to step two, which we're gonna be connecting the upper portion to the bottom and we're gonna need four M825 bolts, which they're separated by steps. So after flipping this thing back around, we're gonna grab the upper portion and we're gonna line it up to these frame pieces on each side. And if we look on the side here, we can see where the bolts will go through. So yeah. So I'm just going to start them. Now we need to 
and get our other side lined up. Now we can go ahead and tighten this side. Snug it up. Go back to this one. And that's it. So for the next step, which is step three, we're going to be putting these covers on on each side. So we got the two covers, five millimeter by ten little bolts, and two plastic covers. And the covers are two sizes. One of them is larger, the other one is smaller. The larger one is going to go over this mechanism on the side of the handle. And you guys can kind of see that spring there. Everything looks pretty nicely built and heavy duty. So yeah, it looks like it just goes over, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the little bolt in there. And the wrench has a Phillips screwdriver on one end. Line it up and tighten it in. And then we're going to grab one of these little caps and cover the hole. Just like that. Very nice. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Alright, so for the next step, we're going to flip the chair over and install our main mechanism, which is called the frog mechanism. And we're going to need four M820 bolts. So the way this thing goes, it faces like this. So this is the front where this little picture is and the knob. And this part here is more towards the back. And it simply just lines up with these holes. And actually guys, there is an issue, as I didn't see this coming, but because we put these all the way in, this frame here doesn't fit between them. So we're gonna have to loosen these back up on both sides and then get this piece in and then butt as far as we can. All right, so everything's tightened up and looking good. Now in the manual, they also show us that these little flaps can go ahead and go on onto the mechanism and they're both the same, so it doesn't matter which one goes which. The only thing that you need to know here is that the flap or the hockey part of the stick goes to the front, so the front's the bottom. And all you gotta do, line up these little grooves on the inside. So you just go back and forth and kind of push it in and it kind of slides in. Then I'm just gonna tap it. And that's it, and it's on. Same thing for this side. I'm gonna find the groove and then tap it in. And that's it. All right, so we're making really good progress. We're in step six, and I'm gonna install the casters onto the bottom base. So this is quite simple. You guys can see there's like a little clip in there that clicks in into the hole. So all we're gonna do is just kind of push, and it'll drop in. Not difficult at all. So now all we gotta do is just flip it over, and now we're on the rollers. So for step seven, we're gonna install the gas strut with the telescoping trim, which is this thing here. And the trim just goes right over, pretty simple. And the bottom part will slide into here. And then for step eight, we're gonna install this piece that we just built onto the chair. Just like that, so yeah, pretty simple. So for step nine, we're gonna flip it over right side up and 10 is for the little cushions and that's it. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over. Push it back here and this is what it looks like guys. Give it a little overall view here. This NLR logo, which is Next Level Racing, it's kind of large. It is actually sewed into the leather, very nice quality. I do wish it was a little smaller, but it doesn't look bad for sure. And the thing that really is interesting about this chair is it's really flat on the bottom. So there's not much bolstering here, it just kind of goes up a little bit. So it should be very comfortable, especially for larger people. Now going up to the back side, we got pretty aggressive bolstering. And that actually looks nice and I love this stitching here. And it gets only better going up as we have this really cool Elite also sewed in there in black, very nice. Large pass-throughs, really cool contours and angles here. We got a next level stitching embossment there, very nice. A little wrinkly right here, not sure why. Maybe it just needs to sit out for a while to straighten out. But yeah, you guys can see we have this kind of like a white or silver stitching with leather on the inside and this carbon fiber looking material. Not sure what this is, it kind of feels like the leather. But yeah, very nice. So yeah, everything looks really good. Great stitching everywhere. Next Level Racing logo here, also sewed in. And I definitely love this upper portion. It really looks high quality and really like a racy kind of look. And if we go to the back, we get kind of the same kind of Next Level Racing logo here. And this is just all clean leather all the way down. So these things here look decent. They're kind of like a shiny plastic. I almost wish they were matte. I think it would look a little better. So we got a pretty thin profile here from the side. 
carbon fiber on the sides and then leather in the middle same thing for the bottom except the bottom has a larger carbon fiber pieces here these caps here are really nice looking We've got our handle here to recline we are a little bit misaligned here on the bottom if you guys can see I don't know if maybe I installed the bolts incorrectly or what but yeah there's a little bit of misalignment here yeah on the other side it has this other trim here so what's really unique about this chair is these armrests so the reason these are unique is because they have a lot of functions so we got up and down which is this lever here so if we pull on it go up and down and it is in steps kind of locks it in that's one another function that you don't do nothing you just twist it is the swiveling which is really nice but this chair goes beyond that we have two more buttons here on the inside which this one here makes the whole handle go closer and farther away from the chair so yeah that actually helps if you're smaller you can get them closer to you and if you're larger you can get them farther away so by being able to do that plus swivel that really helps out with the comfort level and this other button here if you push it you can go closer or farther away back to front so yeah lots of uh, adjustments on these armrests now the only thing that I noticed that seemed to be a little strange is that they're pretty wobbly and if you can see that especially side to side so back and front is not so bad and not so much and up and down is fine but it's just mostly side to side which is kind of unfortunate I don't think it's gonna really you know make a big difference as you're using it but just kind of wish I had better tolerances yeah they're pretty good and pretty versatile and so for the other functions this is just a recliner here which reclines the backrest and then we have our functions underneath which the one on this side for the gas strut up and down if you click on it, it should go up there it goes the other side is a lock so it keeps the chair from rocking back and forth so you can lock and lock it here and then we got the spring adjustment or tension for how easy it rocks back and forth so pretty standard so let's go ahead and try to connect this chair to the wheel stand 2.0 here and the way this works is a couple of the front wheels are just gonna lock into this extension piece here so let's go ahead and try it out see how easy this would be So here's the interesting part, because these wheels are smaller, or the diameter of them, it actually rolls around in there. I was not expecting that. I was thinking because these both are next level racing products that they would have a more snug fit. So I'm a little disappointed about that because I know the chair is going to be moving back and forth from just, you know, playing. And also another thing is that this thing does seem to sit higher than other chairs that we had before. So we're definitely going to be more upright than normal. But other than that, you guys can see it looks really nice together here with this setup. And it looks really good and matches with everything else. And so the other thing that's really good about this kind of chair is that you can use it for gaming like we got here, the simulator. And then when you're done, you can just pop it out very simply just pulling on it and it comes out. And then go back to your office work by your desk, let's say. So yeah, it could be very versatile and quite useful for multi-purposes like this. So we still have these two cushions that we haven't looked at. So this is the headrest. This is actually a really nice material. It's really soft and velvety and just feels really premium. And this kind of goes over on the top here and it's extra support for your head or neck and seems to fit pretty well here. Got a strap going around and actually looks really good too. So yeah, happy with that. Now this one here is also similar material, really soft. But the way you install this, you guys can see the long straps. You kind of go around the chair and then you can, you know, adjust the height where you want this. For me, usually I like it pretty much all the way down so that's where I would keep it so I went ahead and put the straps around so you guys can see what that looks like it's not too bad and this is how it's intended somewhat and obviously you can go up and down and these are really good if you need that support for your back so we're gonna let Marcus do some racing here with the simulator another thing I haven't mentioned yet is the cushion on the chair is on the firmer side so if you do like the more firm feeling this chair is great but if you want something super plush this is not for you so this is more like a sports car feeling kind of chair if I can compare it to something and also guys another thing that I really like that not all chairs have is that you can tilt this thing and it locks in that position. And this lever here on the left side is the one that locks it. So when you release it, you can rock back and forth. And if you want to lock in a position, let's say you're just kind of chilling out and you want to lean back, not just with the headrest, but with the whole bottom part, kind of like that. I went ahead and tilted it up and you guys can see it's a pretty good lean. And obviously you can adjust the tension here. Yeah, this is a very versatile and great multi-purpose chair. All right, so we got Marcus here with us and Marcus is five foot two or so and this is what he looks like in the chair as you guys can see he fits pretty well all right so we're gonna be playing the Gran Turismo 7 with this Subaru here and away he goes 
So yeah guys, again, he is sitting a little bit more higher up than other chairs we used before. So he's more upright, but it's only a little bit and probably all we gotta do is maybe adjust the wheel a little bit higher and also the screen. But yeah, overall, very nice chair and fits really good with this setup. So if you guys are interested in this next level racing chair, I'm gonna leave some links in the description. Check it out. And if you are interested in any of this racing simulator stuff, we got a review for pretty much everything. The wheel stand 2.0 is awesome. The G29 Logitech steering wheel is a really good value. Obviously the PlayStation 5 is amazing. And these gaming speakers are very cool. We are using a 40 inch Vizio 4K TV with also a next level racing portable stand, which is really nice. All right, well hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this and other things we do on this channel, stay tuned for more. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.